Hi, today's video features an unusual IMA3303 master station. This master station was sent in by a customer named Bob. He sent it in because during the course of a remodel, it was removed from where it was installed and apparently it got dropped. And when it got dropped, it had some physical damage. The um, left-hand door was broken and it apparently fell on the back of the unit and two of the circuit boards were damaged and some of the components were damaged. And after that, it didn't work anymore. So he sent it to me to have me look at it. During the course of the repair, I repair, replaced one of the circuit boards. I replaced the switchboard assembly, which is the small narrow board here along the bottom because it had been broken almost in half. And then a bunch of components and some repairs were done on the main circuit board. The main circuit board is the board with the amplifier, the tuner. So to give you a little backstory on Bob's IMA3303, it was an upgrade replacement to his original system, which was a Newtone IM3003. And when the upgrade was done around 2010, only the master station was upgraded. All of the original speakers and all the rest of the system are still from the 3003 system, which is fine because they're all fully interchangeable and fully compatible. One of the things when I talked to him before he sent this in to us in my long list of questions when I discuss a repair with every customer is, if this was installed in 2010, that was two years after the IMA 3303 had been officially discontinued. I asked him, where did it come from? You know, did you buy it from a Newtone dealer? Did you buy it from an electrical wholesaler? You know, did the installer acquire it for you? And he didn't remember exactly. He said he may have bought it on eBay or he may have bought it some other place online, but he didn't really remember and he didn't. In the beginning at that point, it was just a curiosity for me to find out because there is a certain amount of difference when you're repairing a factory fresh unit compared to one that maybe came off of Craigslist or eBay or someplace like that, somebody selling it online, and then you don't know the history of the unit, you don't know whether it's really truly new or not, you know, or was it a used unit or a quote, refurbished unit. After I did the fundamental repairs on this to make it work again, because when it came in, it was for the most part non-operational. And the normal course of repair here at my shop on a unit like this is I disassemble it completely. So I have the three boards out of the faceplate. I did the necessary repairs to make it function again. And then I put the boards together outside the faceplate to test them and then see how it works and if there's other problems. And once those are identified, those problems can be repaired and then once we got it to the point where it seemed to be fully functional again then we did all of the normal refurbishment work that we do on every 3303 that comes in to give it longevity after all of that work had been done I pieced the three boards back together again this was what I call the out of the face plate testing so when I had it put together and working out of the face plate and I was testing all of the functions I had it hooked up to a door speaker and two remote inside stations on a normal 3303 terminal board, I noticed some odd operational problems with the radio tuner. The intercom function worked fine, the amplifier was fine, but the radio tuning seemed kind of odd. It's a little hard to explain exactly, but in operating the tuning buttons and the preset radio station buttons, it would be somewhat random. Sometimes it would, if you push the scan button, it would scan and scan and scan and never stop. But if you went back and tuned manually, it would lock into the normal radio stations that we can receive here at the shop. You could preset the memory radio button 6 AM and 6 FM, but when you switched back and forth between them, it would, sometimes the station would the station number on the display would change but the radio station would stay on the first station so as an example if it was playing on memory station number three and i push memory station number two button the display would change immediately but the the actual tuning of the station would lag behind six eight ten seconds and then it would finally change and sometimes you would switch up 
like go from five to one and the display would change but there was no sound at all it was just it wasn't even static it was just no sound and then 10 seconds later the radio station would pop in so it seemed very random and there wasn't any kind of definite pattern to it so i did what would be normal is i took a look at the tuning section of the main board and the tuning section of the main board, this is the main board of an IMA3303. The tuning section is this section of the board here. And what you have here is your AM FM tuner module. You have two different ICs. There's an, an IC for the AM and an IC for the FM, which includes the, it controls the scan and the memory tuning and those sort of things. And then you have your normal sort of tuning supporting components here. First, I look for damage in this area of the board on the back because it did get dropped and the tuning module stands up off the board quite a bit and I thought well maybe it landed on the tuning module when it was dropped and it cracked the trace or caused some other kind of problem. I checked all of the normal points in the tuning section that could cause problems. I didn't find anything that really stood out to me. I did replace this IC here because this is the one this IC has to do with the scan mode and the memory preset mode in some simplified explanation. It's the chip that communicates with the microcontroller on the on the microcontroller board you know if there was some problem with that it, it seemed to be sort of a communication problem more than a functional problem it wasn't that it wouldn't tune in stations it just wasn't switching between stations as it should and so on like that after checking out all of that and i actually did go as far as replacing the entire amfm tuner module with one from a donor board just to make sure because tuner modules are tricky to work on and it's much more efficient to just swap it out to see to start with than it is to try to go through the troubleshooting of it and after doing all of that I didn't find anything that really called out itself as a problem after having done all of that the only thing that was left in my mind that could be a potential source of the problem would be the microcontroller itself on the microcontroller board. The microcontroller board is the board that sits immediately behind the faceplate and it has the microcontrollers about here and it has supporting components over here and it has all of the tactile switches for all of the buttons and it includes the display. I've seen a couple sets with microcontroller problems that act this way. However, usually they have other problems also that are somewhat random and it's not totally confined to just the radio. Not that that is necessarily an indication that it couldn't have been a microcontroller problem because it could have been, but it didn't really seem that way to me. I did some basic tests on the microcontroller and some measurements and I didn't find anything that really seemed to be a problem. And at that point, that afternoon, I was out of time and had to go back to the office. So I packed it all up, or I didn't pack it all up, but I shut it all off and I was heading back to the office and I was almost out the door of the shop when something occurred to me that seemed kind of unusual. And what occurred to me was when you have disassembled as many 3303s as I have, you get to know what the boards and things look like when you take them apart. And on an, on a, on an IMA 3303, the board the color of the actual circuit boards vary and this is true throughout the production life of the 3303 but on the last IMA 3303s the main circuit board on the back of the unit is a green board and then the microcontroller board behind the faceplate is a very 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 light sort of light 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 tan ivory colored board and I remember recalling that when I took this one apart originally the main board is green but the microcontroller board is not the light 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 tan color it's more of the medium yellowish sort of brown or tan color that earlier microcontroller boards have and while it seemed for a moment when I disassemble it's like oh that's odd you don't really think that much about it because you know they produce tens of thousands of these so there's bound to be some crossover and when boards are used and that kind of stuff so you know you don't put a lot of stock in it so I actually came back into the shop before I was on out the door I was just about ready to lock up and drive back to the office 
and I came back in to take a look at something because it occurred to me that something wasn't adding up and you sort of when you've done this for a long time like I have you sort of have a feel for how things go and and, and you have sort of a sense of things that you're working on and I decided to take a quick look at it and one of the things in my quick investigation that I noticed was the this this turns out to be what I call a constructed unit this is not an original unit that was manufactured as it sits here on the workbench today. And the reason I know that is the boards in it are from different times. The main board on the back, which is truly an IMA 3303 circuit board, you can date boards. There is no, There are no manufacturing dates that Newtone puts on the boards, but you can date boards reasonably close based on the on the date codes that manufacturers put on things like integrated circuits and the integrated circuits that are on the main board are all dated around the 48th week of 2007 and if the chips were made in at the end of 2007 that means they would have been used in manufacturing sometime in the first half of 2008. So that matches with what you would expect for what apparently is a late model IMA 3303. However, the, the integrated circuit, the chips on the microcontroller board are all dated the first quarter, it's like the 24th week of 2003. And the other thing is on microcontroller boards, while there are six different individual versions of the microcontroller boards that Newtone manufactured that cover the entire production span of all the 3303s. The microcontroller board in a late model in a 2008 IMA 3303 is what we refer to as it's a Dash 01 version 6 board. And the board that's in this unit is a Dash 01 version 4 board. And if you put the two boards side by side, you would think that, well, they're almost identical, and they are almost identical. There's very few differences, but one of the differences is in the microcontroller itself, microcontrollers have loaded into them when the boards are manufactured, they have firmware. Firmware are instructions that tell the system how to operate. And when you ask a 3303 to do something, what you're really doing is you're launching a series of instructions. You push the button and what you're doing is like if you walk up to the set and you push the FM button, what you're doing is you're telling the microcontroller somebody wants to listen to the FM radio. And then the microcontroller looks up the set of instructions that it needs to follow to make that happen. And you would think that, well, you push the button and the radio turns on and it plays the FM radio, very much like when you walk into a room and you flip a light switch on and the table lamp lights up. But that, in fact, is not how it works at all. There's a series of steps. So when you push the FM radio button and you tell the microcontroller that someone wants to listen to the radio, some of the steps that it has to achieve to make that happen are it has to turn the red LED light on next to the button. It has to switch the display from the time to the FM radio number readout. It has to switch back to the last FM station that was listened to. It has to turn the amplifier on in the master station. It has to actually change or have the tuner change to that specific station that you that was playing last and then you hear the sound of the FM radio play and because all of that happens essentially at the speed of light to you the user it just looks like you push the button and the radio turns on and that accounts for why we have this sort of random delayed radio operation problem with this particular set because the steps that the microcontroller needs to carry out to make the radio play or make the radio stations change are not being processed in the correct time or in the correct order and it's as if it's somewhat confused. After I discovered all of that I figured it was time to give Bob a call 
and maybe ask a few more important questions. When I called Bob and I talked to him about the physical damage to his master station and I sure assured him that all of that had been repaired and everything was working correctly again, I began to then move towards what I called an unusual problem that I discovered with the set. In during the conversation and in asking questions and as building up towards what the important questions were going to be, I found out that the way I observed the radio tuning would operate on this unit Bob had experienced also and he said oh yeah that's kind of always the way it was once when we got it after it was installed it always seemed to be a little random but we just got kind of used to how that worked so it turns out that it was always that way so that's why I consider this to be a constructed unit it has mis mismatched circuit boards it has a microcontroller board that's easily four years earlier than the main board because it's a different version of board they're not totally compatible they're the wrong mix so once we had that cleared up then the question could be well what do we do about it well there's really only one well I guess there would be three choices you do nothing and you live with what I would call the quirky operation of it and once you get used to the quirky operation then you know you understand how it works and if it's not a big deal and Bob didn't seem to he said he didn't care so that's one solution the other solution would be to find a late model 2008 microcontroller board not an easy thing to do because there aren't as many of those around yet to scavenger boards from and that means that it would be expensive or to find a 2004 main board and rebuild it and again not as hard to find one they're more readily available I have some here but it's more expensive because you're buying a whole board and it has to be totally rebuilt and the other work's already been done and all that kind of stuff I guess the moral of the story is you have to be careful and I've done another video about this it was an unboxing video of what was supposed to be a brand new never installed 3303 master station on eBay which of course when I unboxed it and hooked it up it didn't work and it had been installed you have to be careful of what you're buying and wh where you're buying it from because sometimes all you're doing is buying someone else's problem. So now that I've yammered on and on and on about this particular unit and the unusual problem it has, I'm going to see if I can demonstrate for you what it does to show you, I guess, how important it is to have the correct boards in your set and not just willy-nilly you know try to get a board for it from from anywhere and then when you put it in either it won't work at all or it doesn't work the way it's supposed to okay so I've got a close-up shot of the uh, control panel here and I'm gonna see if I can show you how it acts up and sort of describe what it does as it goes since it's really very random it's really hard I tried to figure out if there was a pattern to the problem and while there might be it seems a little elusive so we'll see what we can do so right now I have the clock preset I have programmed in 6 a.m. and 6 f.m. radio stations and so what we're going to do is we're going to start with a.m. and see the red light came on but we have no sound it's on 770 a.m. which I think is memory number I guess it's memory number five so if we switch up and back, see it's going to the different stations. And these are all true radio stations, but we're not getting any sound at all. Now if we switch to FM, see I, I missed that. I, when I pushed FM, the display switched to 92.1, and you can go back and look at it, and, but it, there was no sound, but then when I pressed memory one, then it came in and played. So if we turn it on again, FM 92.1, no sound. If I push the button, it plays. It should play automatically as soon as it turns on, but it didn't. And then if I push memory two, it's all right. Memory three, 94.1 is a real radio station, but there's no sound. If I go back to 2 and then back to 3, see, sometimes it will lock in. If we go to 4 and back to 3, then it plays. So it's, there's 92.1, no sound. But if I push it a second time, then there's, then it tunes in. 
If I go to six and then five, no sound. But if I go back to six and back to five, no sound. If I go to four, no sound. And then back to five, then five plays. Back to four, no sound. So if I go to three and then four, then four plays. So hopefully that's a little bit interesting to everyone watching this. It's as if it it's missing a step or the steps are lagging behind a whole lot. And the reason that would be the case is, I believe it has something to do with the firmware that's in the microcontroller. And if Newtone went to the trouble to relabel the boards between, if there's, I know there are version fours because there's, those are pretty common. And I don't know if there are actually version fives or not. I don't recall ever seeing a microcontroller board that said version five. Perhaps it was a short-lived version or perhaps it was a revision that never made it into production and then it became a six. I don't know because there isn't anyone to ask and there's no documentation on that. But it's a pretty big jump. Even if it's four to six, it's a pretty big jump. And since the board itself didn't physically change, the boards are almost identical between a four and a six, the revision would have to be something to do with the firmware. And it may have something to do with the conjunction between the microcontroller and the firmware and the tuning section of the main board. As I showed you, there's that one chip, the one I changed out, that controls the scan and memory functions for the tuner. And I know that in later IMA 3303s, it used a different style of chip. It's a different package. It's a different size and it mounts differently. And there, and, and it was, a, so it was an update of the original chip and they may have done that because the original style chip was either no longer available or no longer being manufactured and there weren't enough left to make a run of circuit boards with. So they went to a more current chip and there may be some subtle differences between the original chip and the later chip. And that meant that there had to be some firmware changes in the microcontroller to make it all function the way it should. Anyway, so how's that for the long way around to the basic topic of this IMA3303 has the wrong boards in it and that gives it some quirky functions. If you like our videos and you learn something from them, give it a thumbs up, thumbs up on YouTube. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel. That's all for today. See you on the next video.